Think you know what you're looking at in a photograph? Think again. Today, I will show you the theory behind this and some more examples on topics of critical theory and aesthetics. can we best explain our experience of viewing a photograph? Our experience of viewing a photograph is shaped by various factors, hence the reason why this can be best explained through the theory of post-structuralism. However, in order to understand post-structuralism, you also have to understand structuralism. What is structuralism? Developed by Ferdinand de Saussure, it is used to analyze and understand underlying structures in language, literature, and science within society. It basically says that everything can be explained by some sort of structure. What is post-structuralism? It was developed in the late 1960s to the late 1970s to reject the structuralist framework of analyzing things. Post-structuralism was established to reject the notion of structuralism. It is used to prove that even the so-called structures that exist within our society cannot rigidly define everything. Why is understanding post-structuralism so important when analyzing photography? In post-structuralism, the meaning of objects and techniques in a photograph are completely shaped by the experiences of the viewer, not by any set standard, contrary to structuralist beliefs. Donald Judd, an artist, best explains what I mean by saying, Objects don't have a lot attached to them. It is what we bring to them physically and psychologically that gives them meaning. Looking at the example again, you can see here that this is a manipulated image set by Roger Fenton called The Valley of the Shadow of Death. The debate surrounding these images is which one was shot first, the one on the left or the one on the right. Our understanding of the images is based on what we can observe physically and psychologically. The main point that I would like to explain to you is that knowing versus not knowing that photos from both the past and the present are manipulated has effects on our response and experience of reading them. This principle is very post-structuralist. For example, let's look at some historical darkroom photography. In the early years of photography, use of non-conventional darkroom and exposure techniques allowed for a photographer to reinvent the original image, hence modifying the viewing experience. The classic example of this is in spirit photography. The American Museum of Photography explained this phenomena in a great way. To a viewer, especially from the 1850s, the experience of viewing a supernatural being in a photograph was very believable. However, for the photographer, the experience of framing the shot was very different. The effect, according to the American Museum of Photography, is achieved by a long exposure. The spirit is an impression of a person who was in the frame briefly during the photographic capture. The vanishing lamplighter, a photograph by the London Stereoscopic Company, is an excellent example of this effect. The experience of viewing this photograph, especially today, differs from that of someone in the 1850s. Since we, in general, have developed technical understanding of the imaging process, the spectacle of the photograph is lost. The fact that differences in opinion and experience of the photograph exist within different time periods affected our responses to these photographs. There is no one set answer or expectation for how these photographs are to be viewed, hence the reason why analyzing these photographs from a structuralist standpoint is not appropriate. Another example of this principle could be observed in some of the photography from the American Civil War. Let's take a look at this photograph by Alexander Gardner, home of a rebel sharpshooter. Think that this was the original photograph? This was staged! 
According to Mary Warner Marion, author of Photography, a Cultural History 3rd Edition, Gardner moved a corpse from the Battle of Gettysburg to the stone wall, positioned him facing the camera, and placed a gun he was carrying as a prop. I bet that you assume that this photograph was an exact historical account of the Battle of Gettysburg. This photograph perfectly segues into our experience of photographs today. Even as early as 1850, our images have been manipulated. This ultimately affects future generations and how they view historical events taking place. It affects our response to understanding historical events and our anthropological understanding of the world. With the advent of digital photography and post-production software packages like the Adobe Creative Suite, this makes it very easy for photographers to create the perfect shot. Sherry Richardi, an American Journalism Review senior contributing writer, wrote an article called Distorted Picture, which talks about the simplicity of image manipulation in journalism. One of the classic examples of a journalist who was famously ridiculed and caught for image manipulation is Brian Walski. In 2003, he admitted to modifying an image from the 2003 invasion of Iraq. He composited two images he shot to create one new image. This image, among others, ignited the digital image manipulation controversy in journalism. This image and this issue are so important because, again, this affects our experience in this generation and beyond of viewing historical events. We rely on the fact that the news provides us with the perfect viewing glass for events that are happening outside of our towns and cities. When it becomes known that those views are altered, then we begin to wonder what is actually happening. We also begin to question the credibility of the photojournalist. Are they capturing what they actually see or are they creating the experience of what we expect to see? What will the future of journalism and photography in general hold for us? Who knows? Our understanding of photography will be shaped based on our experiences with the events of the photographs. Because of this, a gap will be created between those who are familiar with the experience of a photograph and those who are not. Understanding the post-structuralist principle in experiencing a photograph is crucial for understanding images moving forward. The viewer holds the key in understanding the image, and those interpretations are unlimited. Knowledge, or lack thereof, that manipulation of images occurs affects our understanding of the context of them and ultimately of our world. Thanks for joining us today here on this night's episode of Topics of Critical Theory and Aesthetics.